Yes, friends, what's happening? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. Hope you're doing well, mate. I really do hope that. Welcome back to Chelsea News. Of course, yes, it's everyday Chelsea News. Here on the channel, Football Therapy, Chelsea News, daily. Yes. Today, we're discussing more of a shake-up in the medical department at Chelsea. Is it needed? Of course, we've had the last two seasons. It's been crazy injuries. It's been a madhouse for a multitude of reasons at Chelsea. But, of course, the injuries have been massive. An exclusive from Nathan Gissing there. And there's a lot of talk about players Chelsea need to sell. Of course, we need to sell some assets come the summer. Mudrik's being talked about. He's only played two full 90 minutes, apparently, since signing, which is wild. And some people are suggesting Chelsea would cut their losses with Mudrik and sell him. I'm going to give my thoughts on that as well after citing an article from The Express. Thanks for joining me, friends. I really do appreciate your support and that many of you love the content. If you do love the content, or even just like it why not like the video you're welcome to subscribe too I believe we've passed the 180,000 uh, mark for subscribers which of course is insane so thank you to all of you guys who decided to subscribe and become part of the football therapy gang the goat gang as the OGs will remember it as everyone's welcome here of course so thank you for subscribing and hitting the bell if you do subscribe and with that said let's get into today's content so yes yeah, starting off with this exclusive from Nathan Gissing who works with Demarzio, a young journalist who seems to have sources inside Chelsea. He writes this on X slash Twitter. Exclusive Chelsea lead physiotherapist Steve Hughes is set to leave the club at the end of the month after nearly 23 years at the club. The news doesn't come as a surprise to Chelsea. The club announced via email to the first team members in September that he would resign in February. Head physiotherapist, a big dog. Matt Law, guesting on the London is Blue podcast, spoke about an even further shake-up in the medical department at Chelsea. And the lead physiotherapist is going, which of course is massive. Now, the guy's been here for 23 years. So with that being said, you need to give him his flowers for a huge period of Chelsea's success with minimal injuries. Of course, there was such a long period at Chelsea where we enjoyed key players just never seemingly being injured for that long. And, you know, I say here on the channel all the time, Chelsea fans used to enjoy the fact that Arsenal would constantly have all these attacking players but constantly have long-term injuries. We've kind of become Arsenal in that sense. But for such a long, long period, Chelsea enjoyed just healthy players without injury and great success. And we were blessed for that. And I don't want to indicate, oh good, we're like getting rid of these medical people where we've had loads of injuries because that's not fair. The guy's been here for 23 years, we've won loads of trophies and we've had a really great medical history in that time. But the truth is, something needs to change lately because we've had incredible amounts of injuries up to like 12 or 14 at one point on the injury list insane numbers and of course recurring injuries which is really worrying uh you know what's happening with Chuck Wameka coming in and out and Kunku of course really concerning stuff but but hopefully things are changing for Chelsea at the moment players are coming back in and the narrative is all about oh poor Liverpool they've got injuries before the cup final which seems almost like satire at this point because we still, of course, have key players out and we've had injuries all season with, of course, no sympathy. Still really interesting to see the whole medical department be rebuilt. Hopefully it gets rebuilt, it settles, and then for the next decade we have a sort of sustained agreeable level of injuries that we can all get on board with and that's minimal of course let me know what you think down in the comment section below and let's move on and we're going to read an article from the express chelsea have weight to shed for Maurizio pochettino's squad ahead of the summer transfer window chelsea flop Mikhailo mudrik i'm just going to stop there i want to let you know because i'm citing a big article that's been circulating in media i do not endorse the usage of the term flop I really don't, especially to someone in Mudrick's situation. But I'm just reading an article here, so let's go on. It's set to be given more time to prove his worth at Stamford Bridge, despite the rumours of a hasty exit this summer. Several stars are reportedly ahead of the Ukrainian on the for sale list, as co-owner Todd Bowley looks to solidify the club's financial position. Cashing in on Mudrick would see Chelsea bank a healthy transfer fee, even though 13 months of disappointing form has seen his market value sharply decline. Some fans have called on the Blues to cut their losses with only four goals to show for the 88.5 million it took to lure him away from Shakhtar Donetsk last season. Pause. 
It's only 88.5 million if the add-ons are triggered and the add-ons are Chelsea winning a Premier League and Chelsea winning the Champions League. I don't think we've won the Premier League or Champions League in the last 12 months, have we? Oh wait, no we haven't. Therefore, it remains at the base price, which is about £60 million. Of course, £60 million is still a lot of money. Um, it makes £40 million for Cole Palmer look like a bargain. But it's not 88 million. Of course, that's more of a sensational headline. And really, 60 million for Mudrik in terms of the transfer battle with Arsenal, in terms of him still being on low wages, he's on 90k a week. It seemed like a bit of a win for Chelsea. We'll talk about his form and his future after we read the rest of the article. But Bowley has two names on a permanent sale list who, if sold, would allow Chelsea to give Mudrick more time to bet in, according to transfer expert Ben Jacob. So this is Romelu Lukaku and Ian Matson are likely to be moved on in the summer. Lukaku has not played a competitive game for Chelsea since 21-22, spending the past two campaigns on loan in Serie A. The Belgium has been amongst the goals at Roma this term, but the Giallo Rossi don't have a buy option when the agreement expires in June. The 30-year-old's impressive goal-scoring form should see Chelsea raise a chunk of cash if they do find a permanent buyer. Even so, the Blues are certain to be dealt a painful loss on the 97.5 million they shelled out in 2021. Yeah, we've spoken about Lukaku at length for the last couple of years. The new owners are okay with it. They understood when they bought Chelsea, they inherited this problem. And Lukaku was sort of top of the problem list. I remember they had a meeting with Thomas Tuchel, like, so what's going on with Lukaku? And, T and Tuchel was like, yeah, just get him away. He's not helping. We're not friends. Uh, let's move on. And they were like, all right, we'll take a hit and do this loan to Inter. Of course, we've got a little bit more of a favourable agreement with Lukaku these days. He agreed to lower his wages so he could get the loan to Roma, which was helpful to Chelsea. And I think he's got a buy option for about 40 million euros, 37 million pounds, which really, he's still a high profile player. It seems about right, especially if an Italian club can afford him. Martzen, meanwhile, has already notched up two assists since joining Borussia Dortmund on loan in January. Like Lukaku, the youngster's move away does not include a buy option, but he should have no shortage of suitors if Chelsea maintain they are willing to sell. Yeah, Martzen, much like Lukaku, has a clause. So it's not a buy option for Roma, it's not a buy option for Dortmund, but there's a clause now for both of them because they re-signed, so Lukaku's for million. I think uh, Mutson's, uh, I think it's something similar as well, or it's 35 million pounds basically, so whatever that is, uh, just under 40 million euros. With the loan fee from Dortmund, it will be 40 million euros. So that's 80 million euros for those two guys. We've spoken about other people before as well. We're going to get money for Lewis Hall uh, from Newcastle. Berea will probably try and sell him, and I know he won't go for the money we originally wanted, but 25, maybe 30 million pounds is quite a lot. And all this means, hopefully, you don't have to sell super pure profit asset Conor Gallagher. But let's spend some time and talk about Mikado Mudrik. So, of course, this is a huge talking point at the moment. I saw it going around social media since we've signed him. And you feel free to correct me if this is wrong. But he's only played two games of a full 90 minutes. Now, of course, this is down to him. And he has played under multiple different managers at Chelsea. Potter, Saltor <laughs> for one game, Lampard, and now of course Mauricio Pochettino. So that's a sample size of different managers with different, you know, approaches. And, you know, maybe Frank Lampard gave him quite a lot of a chance as well. He wanted to see if he could get something out of him. But it's not like there's been one coach who's had a chip on his shoulder and has decided not to play Mudrik. So therefore, there's a bit of an issue there. Now, I'm very mindful when I criticise Mudrik, um, not least because of what's happening in his home country, and I think he's been very emotionally affected by that, understandably and quite rightly so. As well, like all Chelsea players or the new Chelsea players, especially the young ones coming from other leagues, I do have sympathy because Chelsea's such a chaotic side. Like, you know, if I... I feel like if Mudrik went to... Maybe not Arsenal like he was meant to, but maybe if he went to Liverpool and they were playing well, Klopp got an arm around him and just says, yeah, just play this transitional game on the left, we're going to get the ball to you. A bit Darwin Nunesy, like, you know, we're going to give you loads of chances and build up your confidence. 
He'd be more settled, I think. I think because he's come into this crazy Chelsea side, like loads of other players, it's been more difficult to settle and harder for some more than others, maybe like Mikhailo Mudrik. Something that I've referenced before is he's really undercoached. He was great at Shakhtar, even in the Champions League. I've said this story, so forgive me if you've heard it before, but of course the situation in the Ukrainian League that all the Brazilians were allowed to rip up their contracts and Shakhtar Donetsk were left with a lot less attacking talent, Mudrik, of course, stayed, and they altered their, uh, their tactics around him, so they played on the counter-attack, essentially playing the ball to him in the left channel on transition and let him do his thing. Uh, probably not that much coaching involved. It worked really well, but, of course, that's the opposite of um, how top, top teams in the Premier League generally like to play. They want you to keep the ball. They want you to do these intelligent, well-coached combinations through the lines, as well as being able to come back and defend diligently. Now all that stuff doesn't really seem to be Mudrik's bag at the moment, or certainly not what he's been coached for. He's still young and he's got a long contract. Now I don't want to just do him dirty here, he's super, super talented. And no, he's not just a speed merchant who's really fast. He can dribble, and he has demonstrated he's got instinctive combinational play with other Chelsea players. We saw it in pre-season, I think, linking up with Nico Jackson, possibly in Kunku as well. He can do it when he's expressing himself and working on instinct. But unfortunately, in the Premier League at the top end of football, you've got to learn to listen and absorb coaching and execute the tactics properly. He has got a lethal finish on him as well. And he's a bit of a wild card, but you know... At this point, we can't really carry a wild card. We need our wingers to do exactly what they're told and get back and defend and help what is now natural fullbacks and Chilwell and Gusto rather than centre backs. I think a little bit as well. Pochettino was thinking maybe I can play Mudrick in front of Levi Colwell if I play Levi Colwell as a left back to cover him a little bit. Us Chelsea fans, after watching that for a few games, we were like, no, this is not it. Especially watching that performance from Colwell against Man City where the Etihad, he is a centre back. Let's play a left back and attack better. You know, Gusto on the right, fullbacks and fullback positions, centre backs and centre backs positions. So, therefore, the wingers have to work hard, track back, and help defend. And that's probably why, largely, Raheem Sterling was picked over the likes of Mudrik to play against Man City. Do I think Mudrik is going to be sold? No. And not just because the optics would look ridiculous, but more than anything, Chelsea would see a loss on him. Yes, his asset. Uh, Yes, his value as an asset long term is protected because it was like an 8.5 year deal. So someone who buys him aren't going to buy him thinking, hey, he's got 12 months left on this deal. They have to sell him for nothing. No, it's because his form's bad and therefore his asset value has decreased. But, you know, scouts will still see there's a lot of raw potential there. I think he can work in the Premier League. I do think it's difficult. Because we've seen, like, you know, raw power before transitional power in the likes of Adama Traore. Now, he's not as big as Adama Traore, but we've seen, like, fast transitional wingers before, like, excite people while running and then, you know, not defending properly, not making the right decision in the final third and not scoring the goals. There's a lot of examples of that, and I'm really, really fearful that he's going to fall into that category. But, you know, Arsenal really wanted him, and he's still... Such a potentially great player. He's an iconic player for his country as well. He's not a ba like a bad character. He's like a, you know, a God-fearing young man who trains really hard and he's got super ambitions. He said he wants to win the Ballon d'Or. <laughs> he's a little bit far away from that at the moment, but, you know, why not have these massive dreams and believe in yourself? And he's shown flashes that he could be excellent. Truth is, at the moment, I don't blame Pochettino for not using him. Uh, we are in a rut at the moment. We need to climb out of it. Um, of course, the right-hand side on the, with wingers is going to be Cole Palmer. It's going to be Noni Madweke. He's looking increasingly effective in the final third. And then on the left-hand side, you've got Raheem Sterling. Uh, you've got Christopher Nkunku, who can play there as well. And Nico Jackson, who's a native left-winger, who's looked more effective. So... Mudrik's been pushed down the line a little bit here, and it's tough for him. Of course, maybe he'll get a start in the FA Cup game uh, that we've got against Leeds, I believe. That should be an opportunity for him to demonstrate a few more sub-appearances, but he hasn't appeared off the bench for the last three games. It's tough for him, but I kind of get it as well. Of course, when he doesn't play, when Chelsea need to generate revenue, uh, this story is going to come up, but I don't think it's realistic, and I don't think Chelsea are going to give up on him just yet. But I do want to talk about it, so I've spoken about it today. Uh, I want to put out to you guys, what do you think about the Mudrik situation? Please do comment down below. I love reading your comments. It's a great conversation down there. Again, thank you to all the new subscribers. You're all welcome. If you're yet to subscribe, 
why not join the GOAT gang? Alright friends, hopefully see you back here very soon. Peace.